We all have secrets we hold on to tightly for fear of someone else finding them out. They could be as mundane as lying about why you've called out of work one day, or that you didn't eat the last of the cookies. But in the late 1970s in Circleville, Ohio, an anonymous letter writer was outing the secrets of the town, and they were much more nefarious than stolen chips ahoy. The small town of Circleville, best known for their annual pumpkin show, was rocked with accusations, blackmail, and booby traps. This is a brief history of the Circleville Letters. As always, this episode of A Brief History may contain graphic content and is not suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. I was unable to find any homes directly related to this case, but instead chose to take to Zillow and will be building a home found within the city limits of Circleville, Ohio. Circleville is and was a small town with a population of around 14,000 people. Best known for its pumpkin show where the last winner showed off a whopping 1,800 pound pumpkin, the town is almost a parody of quaint small town Americana, but it holds a deep dark secret. Over 40 years ago, the small town of Circleville, Ohio, as well as the surrounding Pickaway County, was rocked with strange and threatening letters by an unknown writer, with the main target of the letters seemingly being a school bus driver by the name of Mary Gillespie. The letters began in 1976, with Mary being the first recipient of a blocky, all uppercase note that read, Stay away from Mossy. Don't lie when questioned about knowing him. I know where you live. I've been observing your house and know you have children. This is no joke. Please take it serious. Everyone concerned has been notified and everything will be over soon. The unknown writer of the letter was accusing Mary Gillespie of an affair with her boss, the superintendent of schools, Gordon Massey. Mary denied having an affair with Massey, but hid the letters from her husband nonetheless, hoping he would never find them and potentially believes the lies she claims were written in them. More letters followed with the same information. Gordon Massey was having an affair and needed to be removed from his office. The letters containing information regarding Gordon Massey were sent to multiple people around town, including elected officials, newspapers, and random citizens of the town. Mary Gillespie eventually received another, more ominous and threatening letter, with the writer stating that Mary's daughter would need to pay for what Mary had done, and threatening to, quote, put a bullet in that little girl's head. Mary again hid the letter from her husband, hoping the situation would blow over and resolve itself sooner rather than later. But then her husband received his own piece of mail from the anonymous writer, and Mary wasn't there to intervene. Mary's husband, Ron Gillespie's first letter read as follows. Mr. Gillespie, your wife is seeing Gordon Massey. You should catch them together and kill them both. He doesn't deserve to live. Ron continued to receive letters, many of which claimed that his life was in danger if he did not act on the knowledge the writer had provided for him. Ron Gillespie confronted Mary and she convinced him of her innocence. But the couple were more than scared at the continual influx of letters and decided to do some sleuthing themselves to find out the mysterious origins of the letters that had all been postmarked from Columbus, Ohio. The couple invited Ron's sister and husband, Karen and Paul Freshor, as well as Paul's sister, into their investigation and spent time trying to narrow down who could have such a vendetta against both the Gillespies and Massey. Mary was immediately drawn to a fellow bus driver who had made advances on her in the past that had been wholeheartedly rejected. The scorned potential love interest, David Longberry, was an obvious choice for someone who may want revenge on Mary. The Gillespies and their friends decided it was best to send David Longberry a letter of his own, claiming that they knew who he was, what he was doing, and that it needed to stop. For good measure, the group sent out letters to other potential suspects as well, hoping that by sending out many letters, at least one would end up with the correct person and the threats would cease. It seemed to work, for a few weeks, and then the problem escalated rapidly. On August 19, 1977, a year after the letters had first began, Ron Gillespie received a phone call to his home. 
Ron slammed the phone down and became visibly enraged by what he had heard on the call. Ron Gillespie grabbed his gun, told his children he was going to find the person writing the letters, hopped into his truck, and left the house. Just a handful of hours later, Ron Gillespie was found dead, with his truck wrapped around his tree, and his recently fired gun on the seat next to him. Officially, the death would be reported as a drunk driving accident by then-Sheriff Dwight Radcliffe, though Ron's family would vehemently deny this as a possibility, because Ron was an infrequent drinker, and they had seen him consume no alcohol that day. Ron's autopsy, however, did show a blood alcohol content of 0.16. After the death of Ron Gillespie, the sheriff also began receiving letters, accusing him of covering up foul play in the supposed drunk driving incident. But life continued on for Mary Gillespie, who, despite her adamant protests for years, actually did begin seeing Gordon Massey. Mary claims that the affair didn't start until after her husband's passing, but Massey did divorce his wife to be with Mary. And in 1983, the anonymous letter writer struck again, this time leaving signs out on the roads that were Mary's typically traveled bus routes. Quite a number of signs accused Gordon Massey of sexually assaulting Mary's 12-year-old daughter, which enraged Mary. She pulled over to the side of the road to rip down one of the signs and found that it had been booby-trapped to shoot whoever attempted to remove it. Mary fortunately survived despite being shot at. The gun on the sign was traced back to none other than Paul Freshor, Mary's ex-brother-in-law who had long since divorced Ron's sister's Karen. Paul claimed that the gun had been stolen but never reported it as stolen to the authorities. Paul was arrested and charged with the attempted murder of Mary Gillespie. During the trial, Paul's handwriting was analyzed by having him copy one of the Circleville letters and the handwriting expert assigned to the case believed wholeheartedly that Paul was indeed the Circleville writer. Both Mary and her sister-in-law also believed that Paul was the writer of the letters. However, Paul was found guilty of the attempted murder, and while in prison, the letters continued, with Paul receiving many letters, going so far as to accuse the prosecutor of his trial of murdering a pregnant woman. Karen Freshore, on the other hand, had lost nearly everything in the divorce, including her children, and was now living in a trailer on Mary's property. Despite never actually having found the identity of the writer of the letters, evidence can also be pointed to Karen. In 1993, the case of the Circleville writer caught the attention of the show Unsolved Mysteries, and it is said that Karen was very unhappy at Unsolved Mysteries coming to their town to investigate. The show even received their own letter, which read, Forget Circleville, Ohio. If you come to Ohio, you El Sickos will pay. Signed, The Circleville Writer. Karen did not participate in any of the interviews regarding The Circleville Writer, and in 1994, when Paul was released from prison, the letter simply stopped. Paul Freshor eventually died at age 70 in the summer of 2012 and adamantly claimed innocence until his death. Who do you believe was the Circleville writer? Was it Paul Freshore or his wife, Karen? Perhaps they worked together despite their messy divorce. Or was it someone else entirely? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining me for another episode of A Brief History. Thank you to my patrons who support this series and this channel. You are much appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.